You've gotten better this season. You've been very consistent, it seems like, in almost every game. Mm -hmm. um, where do you think you've improved the most from, from the end of last year to, to right now? Uh, I definitely want to say my leadership. I feel like that's been consistent throughout the whole year. Um, and just me being confident uh, with my work ethic this past off season, this summer, and even leading up to the season. Um, I've been pretty consistent staying in the gym and just you know, having a good mental space. And I feel like you know, me being confident within my work and myself and believing in myself has uh, gave me the ability to be consistent and having the trust in my coaching staff as long as my teammates. That definitely you know, gives me a big uplift. Um, you know, and I have a lot of goals set, so just kind of um, being a winner and uh, you know revisiting my goals uh, kind of just keeps me on the path where I need to be. Anything on the court you think it's gotten got a little bit better at? Better shooter, better rebound. <laughs> I mean, anything in particular you think you can go? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, my shooting. I think like early in the season it hasn't. You know, I was kind of you know bothered with a little finger injury, but you know. Uh, now I'm kind of like you know shooting at a, a, a high clip where I you know normally able to shoot at, um, and you know, my, as far as the rebounding, I know it might be like kind of new to you guys, but it's always been an underrated part of my game that you know has been uh, I've been doing since I was little. So, and kind of on the note of leadership, are there any younger players in particular that you've kind of taken under your wing? Uh, you know, uh, Seth, Tyler, uh, Trez, um, Demarco. And all Jalen, all the younger guys, you know, just to help them, you know, I was once in their shoes as freshmen and sophomores, just to you know, help guide them, you know, through the tough times, through the good times, and just kind of be there um, to help them through, you know, anything if they have questions or you know they're doing well, what they're doing wrong, just to guide them because you know I was in their shoes and I was, you know, I, for me personally, I didn't really have um, like kind of like a a veteran uh, like point guard or guards. Um, I was my freshman year, I kind of just like threw into the fire, so. I'm just trying to help them figure it out as well. RJ, how have you seen Armando kind of develop leadership-wise from y your freshman year mm -hmm. till now? I mean, he's definitely stepped up as one of our leaders. He's being more vocal. Um, he knows that we need him. Um, so, you know, you know, his leadership of, you know, not just vocally, but just like his actions, leading by example uh, for, the, for the younger guys, because, you know, they look up to him. And so we need that from him. He's been doing a great job, you know, since his freshman year now too. You know, being a senior, um, and I was super proud. Do so you feel like that defense you guys played the last ten minutes or so versus Wake can can carry over? And were you even surprised by just how much that kind of changed the way you guys played? I mean, we showed that we could do it, so now I think we actually had to do it the last ten minutes of that game. Um, we were aggressive. We showed some presence, um, and I feel like we need to carry that over for a full forty minutes of the game. Uh, we showed that we can do it, so. We actually have to, you know, bring it over into the game, you know, starting on you know, tomorrow morning. Go back to Armando. He said uh, he had some interesting things to say after the pick game, and uh, he said that some of his words resonated with you guys. He thought that you guys really heard him and, and kind of how he described his dissatisfaction with how that game played out. When when he says those kinds of things, do you guys hear it from just through the media, or does he say the same thing to you guys when the doors are closed? I mean, I think it's amongst the locker room. I don't think it's just one person. Um, everyone gives like their, you know, their insight of, you know, the way we're supposed to play and the way we weren't playing. Um, and we definitely heard, um, you know, him is definitely like in the locker room. Um, and it was definitely addressed of how we were playing. So um, I'm pretty sure that got through with everyone, and you know, we wanted to change the narrative. Is his voice the loudest, for lack of a better term, or are there several of you that are kind of? even in that sense of having a profound voices in the locker room? No, there's definitely several of, um, of guys that are, you know, loud and, you know, they give their uh, insight of, you know, what we need to be. And I think that's what brings us so close. close. Um, and it just shows how much, like, leaders we have. You know, there's never just one voice or um, one person just talking. Everyone chimes in and, um, you know, talks about, uh, what we did right, what we did wrong, how can we move forward, and I think it's just great to hear, you know, not just from like the starting five, it could be like Dewey, Cray, and Jackson. Um, I think that would, you know, just make, makes us such a good team. Last I mean, year, it seemed like that loss against Pittsburgh <coughs> at home was part of the reason why you guys were able to, you know, get things going and rolling into, into the tournament. Do you see any parallels between the loss at Pitt and last year's loss in terms of how you guys have reacted and, and moving forward? I mean, yeah, 100%. Um, like, I'm, my main thing is just not try to get too satisfied and, you know, not take a step back. I feel like we always get, you know, at a point where we feel like we have it um, and we just take a deep breath and let up. And, 
know, um, just kind of just, you know, the king theme just being tired of, uh, you know, letting teams back into the games and not giving our full 100% effort. Because, uh, you know, we're super talented, but it's just more about, you know, playing with that, you know, enthusiasm every night. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, we lost last year at, um, against Pitt and again this year. It kind of just, you know, changed a little bit and it's kind of like a turning point a little bit. How do you maintain consistency? Like, you don't have the ebbs and flows in the games. Like, what is the key to this team to, to play at the high level consistently every game for every half? I mean, I think it starts in practice. Um, I'm a big believer in you practice the way you play. And uh, I feel like, you know, the way we practice, if you're, you know, and you're, if you're working on your game, then um, you kind of just locked in mentally and, you know, trusting each other, trusting the process. Um, I feel like that leads to consistency, um, you know, I feel like um, in practice, there's times when we're playing with effort and we're playing so hard that it translates over into the game. And you guys like see that because um, that's what we've been practicing all week. So um, that's my um, thoughts on it. You guys always get people's best shot, you know, being UNC. But are you feeling it even more so this year, given going to the championship, everybody that came back, the hype that surrounded? Are you just seeing that, hearing that, even from other teams, talking trash on the court, things like that of that nature? I mean, yeah, I mean, we knew what was expected coming into this year, just the, you know, the hype around the team and, uh, you know, playing against great, great teams. Um, we knew the type of energy that was going to be brought to us, uh, you know, because we kind of, you know, brought this upon ourselves, you know. Um, and we're going to play against, you know, teams that are highly competitive and looking forward to get after us. So knowing that and knowing that we're going to give everyone the best shots, we have to be prepared as a team as well. RJ, the Notre Dame game last year was, it, the, the loss in South Bend seemed like a game that you guys were really, really down after. Have you gone back and revisited uh, that game in the, in the lead up to tomorrow? I mean, yeah, we watched a couple of clips and then, uh, you know, we emphasized on how, you know, poorly we played uh, last year. And kind of just, you know, you know build off what we did um, against Wake Forest uh, leading up to Notre Dame because, you know, they're a good team as well. Uh, so if we just, you know, lock in on the key points that we emphasize in practice, um, it will be more than fine. RJ, you were going back to after the pit game, I think you said something like, we always say we're right there, we always say right there, well, if we have the pieces that we have, why wouldn't we just mm -hmm. go ahead and get there? Um, kind of like what, what Ross asked you, like, has some of the inconsistencies that you guys have had to deal with, has that been like the biggest surprise for you this year? Like, it, did you not expect those, some of the valleys to, to pop up for you guys? I mean, I definitely, you know, you know, I wouldn't say this is going to be a perfect season. I definitely expected some, you know, obstacles and some ups and downs, but definitely, like, you kind of, like, shot a little bit with the inconsistency just because of how much of a veteran team you have and we're so talented. So it kind of was just like, you know, like back to I was saying, like, we're right there. But, like, why do we have to be right there when we know what we're capable of? So. Um, I think like, you know, just being consistent, uh, not getting too complacent, too satisfied with just one win or however many wins we may win. Um, just to, you know, keep, you know, building and uh, dig deeper each game. One or, two, one or two more, sure. Yeah, just kind of wanted to ask about, we were talking with Coach Davis about how Caleb Love, maybe he's not shooting great from the perimeter, <coughs> but, you know, he can defend and do other things to impact the game. You're on the court there with him. Can you just speak to how when maybe he's not having the best shooting night, other ways that he is impactful in the game? I mean, yeah, he, he, I mean, Caleb's a great player, and we know what he's capable of. You know, he can sc score the ball um, and shoot the ball really well. And, you know, that's what we're going to need from him. Um, but, you know, as you said, like, there's other ways that he has impact the game. Defensively, um, um, he, he did a, a tremendous job um, against Wake Forest. His impact on the ball, um, off the ball, uh, we definitely needed that, and that's something that you know we're gonna need for the rest of the season. And I told him like you're gonna be good, like the shots are gonna fall. Um, I'm not too worried about that because he's taking great shots, so um, he's gonna continue to be the player that we know he's gonna be. The other right. night was a little bit of like a breakout game for Steph in a way. What does he bring to this team that maybe you didn't have last year? You talk about the past, but mm -hmm. Seth was on this team last year. So what does he do to this group? I mean, yeah, Seth, he's been you know phenomenal for us. You know, his impact off the off the bench, kind of like a spark plug. And the way he defends the ball, um, he brings energy. The way he gets downhill, um, he's so quick, always telling like, like you can literally just go by anyone and get down to the hill. And you're so athletic, you can finish at the rim. So his ability, I feel like last year, we didn't have like another like um, ball handler that could you know play the ball, ball on the ball. Um, and that is definitely something that we need. You know, definitely if I need a break, um, I know like, you know, we have Seth coming in, 
um, and then you know harass other defenders. So, RJ, last one. Is there any difference for you between shooting, coming off the screen, stepping into one, and just being all alone at your three point line mm -hmm. in terms of how you shoot it? Or what's your favorite? Uh, is it and what you look at? Is it? It's just instinctive, or what is it for you? I mean, for me, I know like I'm a great shooter, so. Uh, but I also looked at percentages. Um, I know, like when I was shooting on the line, I was probably like forty percent plus. You know, it was very efficient. So uh, me just knowing that, just trying to get to the line, to the three point line, um, and I know I can shoot, uh, catch and shoots, and um, you know, coming off a, a, a screen. And I feel like you know, for me, like my favorite is probably like catch and shoot, just because I know I can really shoot the ball um, really well and um, be efficient from that. So just. Knowing that, um, just try to get the, those more catches, those more. So you have percentages of, of where you take the shot from? Yeah, I look at the percentages from like, uh, if I'm shooting on the line, um, if I'm taking like, you know, a foot and a half off the line, uh, I see all those. So it kind of just helps me see visually uh, how I can prove. Who what, does that for you? Yeah, Who does that where do you get those numbers? Uh, me and Coach Lee will be uh, look at it together. Uh, how do you get them? How do you get the numbers? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's just Watch a synergy thing? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, RJ. Yes, sir. <laughs>